Hakuna Matata, bitches! It's Wheezy, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, jump straight into this. I haven't really thought about what I'm going to talk about, but this is Battlefield 3 on PC. I know. Everybody unpucker your buttholes. Um, so I don't know if Origin and EA are still having this sale, but they were having a... Uh, a, a, a Battlefield 3 sale, Battlefield 3 on PC for 5 bucks, or Battlefield 3 Premium on PC for 20 bucks. I opted just for the 5 buck one, because I figured for 5 bucks, I'd like to see what this is like on PC. I, you know, let's get into the middle of the PC console game of Battlefield 3 was meant for PC. You're not, oh, <laughs> this is me trying to learn jet controls, I, and E is eject from jets, so that's good to know. <laughs> Uh, so don't do that. Um, we, we may talk about that in this video or another video, but I cannot do vehicles on PC. I, I, it's the same problems I had when I played Battlefield 2. I just, I got transport choppers okay because I could fiddle it around. Um, but I never could get jets because you just can't get that fine-tuned performance without a joystick. And I don't have a flight stick. And I don't have a controller for my PC. But I don't need that, right? Because keyboard and mouse is the best input device ever devised by man. So why would I possibly need a controller or a joystick? Because PC is the best ever. Um, yeah, am I making you mad yet? Yeah, or am I making you happy? Are you like, yeah, yeah, console, boo, PC? Well, it's not black and white, folks. But, uh... But anyway, five bucks. Why not? I uh, battle us. Let's go. At Battlefield is a PC game. Battlefield 1942, Battlefield Vietnam, Battlefield 2. The game that got me into. Well, I played Battlefield Vietnam, but what I really got into was Battlefield 2. I got into Battlefield Vietnam late in its life, and that's what made me really excited for Battlefield 2 to release. And I talked about this when I posted my Battlefield 2 video before Battlefield 3 came out. But uh, I played hundreds of hours of Battlefield 2 on PC, and I love that game. I still love that game, but uh, I'm, as you can see, I'm a little rusty. <laughs> I would never have lost that gunfight on console. Um, I'm still adjusting to the controls. Uh, it's been a while. I've been away, but uh, and go ahead and say it: keyboard and mouse controls are inferior for playing video games and first-person shooters. Especially first-person shooters. Uh, oh, did he? J no, he didn't. Wheezy didn't just say that. Well, you know why I'm saying that? Here's why. The mouse, as a device, is singularly uh, suited to point and click. It is perfect. That's what it was designed for. That's its purpose. And you can see where that fits really well in shooters. Because you point your cursor, where your crosshairs are, at your enemy, and you click on them to kill them. It's like playing Microsoft Excel, but you're murdering individual cells. You know what I mean? It's just point and click to kill. Which is sounds like it's the best way to do it, right? But but Wheezy, you just said that it's that it's keyboard and mouse is inferior. It is, because with the exception of the mouse. The rest of the control scheme is terrible. A keyboard was designed, like a mouse was designed for pointing and clicking. That's what it does. A keyboard was designed for typing, for writing. It was not designed for games. It's not ergonomic. It's not laid out in a way that's logical to be able to access multiple functions. And modern games are very complicated. I mean, you talk about an Xbox 360, a PS3 controller. They utilize every button and every secondary function of the button. So most of the times, uh, pushing a button has a different effect than holding a button. Or clicking the stick is different than holding it. And, you know, I mean, they use every single input on these controllers, all these buttons. And they're all within easy hands reach. You don't have to move your hands for that. That is not the case on the PC. You have to scoot your hand around and you have to do all kinds of weird deformations of your fingers on the keyboard to access everything and you have to you have to couple your aiming with your shooting and and you say well well you have to do that on the console too but that's not true with a controller your your palms and and to an extent your your ring pink your ring fingers and your pinky fingers your palms and your ring and pinky fingers uh, hold the controller steady and you can even do it just with, with just your palms, but, but typically palms and pinkies minimum, right? And that leaves you between six and eight fingers 
free to individually operate things. If you just hold your hands up in front of you right now and hold your pinkies down and move your other fingers and look how much dexterity you have and then try taking that hand motion and laying it down like it would be on a keyboard and mouse and you will realize that you still that you have essentially access to all five of your fingers on your left hand for the keyboard and flip-flop this if you're a lefty or weird or whatever. Um, but your pinky serves only secondary functions and it's again you have to kind of cramp it to get to the shift and control keys to do those things. It's not unheard of but it's not comfortable, right? It's not a problem but it's not comfortable. So you've still got that and then the fit all of your four fingers, three to four fingers extra on your right hand, unusable because you have to use your whole hand to to move the mouse which leaves you two fingers one for aiming and one for shooting left mouse and right mouse you know and maybe and you know and you also share your index finger for for we weapon toggling but you can't isolate the firing motion from your aiming motion because you're moving your entire hand while you're moving while you're trying to click and fire on a controller your hand doesn't move your thumb is isolated on doing the aiming your right thumb does all the aiming and your right index finger or your right middle finger do the firing and those are completely isolated movements so your movement does not affect your pull on the trigger and vice versa um, that's not the case on PC now again I'm not I'm not putting these things in absolutes but I have uh, you know over the long term I would say I have put a good amount of time more into consoles than in PCs. I mean, I'm talking thousands of hours on PC and probably tens of thousands of hours on on console. That's probably an exaggeration. It's probably more like uh, two to five thousand hours on a PC uh, playing games, not not in general, because I'm on a keyboard every day for my job. Keyboard, that's what I do. You know, I write software, so I've got way more time with a keyboard and mouse, so it's not about knowing how they work. You know, it's about their use in a game uh, versus a controller, which I've got more experience, especially recently with. So, so these aren't absolutes, but they're. Um, I, I say that to say, you can be extremely proficient with either one. You can also be extremely proficient with both. People who say that keyboard and mouse is superior to controller, what they mean is that they are better with a keyboard and mouse than they are with a controller. People who say that a controller is better than a keyboard and mouse mean that they are more proficient with a controller than they are with a keyboard and mouse. I would say that I am equally proficient with both. I have spent enough time with a keyboard and mouse in games, not just in general, but also in general, and enough time with a controller of all kinds. I've, you know, I've used every kind of controller there is from the Atari 2600 and the Vectrex all the way up to the Xbox 360 PS3. You know, I, I've used them all and I will tell you that as it exists right now, the best controller in the history of gaming is the Xbox 360 controller. It's just it's just the way it is. Uh, that could be debatable, right? But there are a couple of minor but significant design flaws with the PS3 controller that make it inferior. And what excites me to get on a small tangent about the PS4 is it looks like they're fixing all of those issues on PS4. They're extending the control stocks at the bottom so it makes the, the controller a little more ergonomic to hold and to access the buttons. They're changing the left two and right two buttons on the PlayStation controller, which on the PlayStation 2 were just uh, digital uh, buttons, you know, that were just the same as the R1 and L1 buttons. In the PS3, they switched them to analog pseudo triggers but they're convex instead of concave so your finger slides off of them instead of nuzzling into them so they work like bubbles so even on the control schemes they weren't well suited to being triggers um so that that was just shitty um and then not to mention that the control sticks were also convex instead of concave which made it hard for your thumb to get purchase on it those issues are fixed for the ps4 controller they're turning left two and right two into triggers that are concave 
you know, not just like the 360 controller, but similar in the fact that they're triggers, which is exciting because that's one of the things I was most nervous about giving up the the Xbox One, the Xbox controller for the PlayStation controller, is I'm not a fan of the PlayStation 3 controller. I've spent more time with PlayStation controllers over my life since PlayStation 1 to PlayStation 3 than I have with Xbox controllers, and the original Xbox hamburger controller is an abomination to man. The slim original Xbox controllers are better. The 360 is currently the pinnacle of controller technology, and we'll see if the PS4 controller is better than the Xbox One controller. Um, but it looks like the PS4 controller will be comparable to the 360 controller, um, which is what I want because the 360 controller is perfect right now. And I don't... It took me a minute to get my sniping down. I, let me let me say this and so, so I can get back on track. And I'm, I'm wandering all over the place, but let's deal with it. I prefer sniping on the PC because if you're talking about precision... Point and click. It, it, this is only the, my. This is only the second guy that I ever killed on PC right here, um, on Battlefield 3. And you'll see that instantly my proficiency goes up once I figure out ha what it requires. Especially since the SVD is a piece of shit. Um, once I realize once it what it kind of expects for you as far as aiming, I love sniping on the P on the the PC. Uh, it's it's so much more precise. But but that precision is a liability when it comes to closer and mid-range encounters. Um, and we can have a whole video talking about uh, aim assist versus no aim assist. Um, especially since since that you talk about the difference between a console where aim assist is kind of necessary to make a shooter uh, feasible. You know, some games allow you to turn it off, but, but for the most part, um, you know, it's it's necessary, and in some cases, it's actually a hindrance. It can pull you off target unintentionally um, on consoles to have auto aim. But it is helpful to turn those really coarse motor skills of the joystick into very fine motor skills. They keep you in the vicinity, but your precision is still relying on you. And anyone who who doesn't believe that's true has never spent significant amount of time playing shooters on consoles. The idea that auto aim puts you on target and keeps you there as you fire is just incorrect. It puts you in the ballpark. And it leaves it up to you to do the minute precision control. Um, on PC, that's always required. And, and it, it brings you to kind of an interesting uh, point because the, the people that argue about uh, keyboard and mouse being the best controls also tell you that using a controller playing on a console doesn't require as much skill because the, the controller and the auto aim make it easier to play. So I don't understand how the argument can be that the mouse and keyboard are superior while being harder to use, but the controller is is harder to use but makes gameplay easier. Again, it's the it's the PC player mindset where they think that auto aim is easy mode, and you could put the exact same auto aim on PC, and uh, you know I I. Y you wouldn't see this this magic where everyone's suddenly good at PC. You know what I mean? Like it's y again, it's this weird contradiction between the keyboard and mouse is a superior form of control, but it's also harder to use and requires more skill. That in itself is a logical contradiction. Either it's easy to use, or it's difficult to use, which is where skill is required. Skill does not apply to doing things that are easy. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And and there's always this argument. That's never, you know, really been played out on a on a decent scale of console versus PC. But I will tell you that uh, there's this there's this prevailing opinion that if you put console and PC players together, that the the PC players will just stomp all over console players because the keyboard and mouse is so superior that there couldn't possibly be competition. And I would submit that with his as proficient as I am with a controller that I could compete and do just as well as someone who's as proficient with a keyboard and mouse. You know, I mean, if you want to compare the best players in the world on PC to the best players in the world on console, you might start to see a slight variation. Although if you have seen the people who play Halo professionally and what they can do with a sniper rifle, the argument of 
of keyboard and mouse being superior to a controller kind of goes out the window. It's all about what you're proficient with. And pushing around a joystick is is no different or no easier or harder than pushing around a mouse with the difference being that the controller gives you a snap back to center that the PC doesn't give you um, which I think is superior to what the keyboard and mouse can give you but again you, you, we're talking about proficiencies here I would love for you guys to comment and weigh in on on your experience and your preference on which is better because it's very polarizing but I'd be interested to hear from everyone if you play more PC than console, I'm glad to hear your opinion just as well. It's got just as much weight as mine does. Um, but I'm especially uh, interested to hear from people who are like me, who have played tons of console and tons of PC, um, how you seem to prefer to play. Um, here's another kind of personal bias, you know, in addition to me not being as big a fan as the... Well, let me, let me do this little preface. If I spent as much time on keyboard and mouse... Um, recently, because like I said, long term, the, the time is, is comparable. But recently, if I'd spend the same 500 hours playing Battlefield 3 on PC that I spent on console right now, I would be as good on PC as I currently am on console, and as good on console as I currently am on PC. So the proficiency is all up to what you focus on, right? And if you played both 500 hours at the same time, which, god damn it, you know, what the hell? Go outside. <laughs> um, then you, I think you'd be equally proficient, and and you would have a uh, probably still a preference which you like better. But I would be more interested to see the pros and cons from someone who has experience with both, because this gets back to the same thing about the console war and fanboyism. If you've only got one horse in the race, then obviously that's going to be your favorite. So you know you don't you don't very often see a, a a a PC player saying, well, consoles are just better, and you don't often see a console player saying, well, PCs are just better. You know what I mean? It, it just doesn't happen because no one's just going to walk out there and be like, yeah, I think PCs are better than consoles, but I bought a console because I'm a fucking moron. You know what I mean? They're, it just doesn't happen. So people choose their preference and, uh, and, and they defend it to the death unless they're a little bit more grown up and they don't base their self-worth on the fact that they've made the right decision about what games they, what platform they play their games on. So anyway, putting all that aside, this is like, I don't even know, what's my rank in this? Two or three? I, I don't know. This is probably like the third or fourth game I played on PC, on Battlefield 3. And I've played several since then, but uh, again, my proficiency on Battlefield 3 on PC is nowhere near where it is on console. And I'm by no means condemning the PC Battlefield 3. It's, you know, I, I even in Battlefield 2, I was never a big fan of 64 player games. You know, I think 32 was about the sweet spot. If you really want to just kind of, you know, I think trolling or just kind of fucking around makes 64 players kind of interesting. But it, but those larger games, especially in Battlefield maps that are just kind of spread out and not real focused, uh, they, they remove a lot of the tactics because uh, it becomes less of a... Uh, although 64, 48 and 64 player rush are more interesting but they more easily devolve into traps um, just because if, if you have 60 if you have 32 people on a team and you get the other team locked down it's easier to hold them down with 32 people than it is with 12 you know so so spawn traps in uh, in a uh, uh, rush on 64 player servers can just be absolutely demoralizing but a competitive 64 player rush game keeps the action really focused and is really interesting um, but it becomes more of a spectacle than a tactical exercise so I think the sweet spot for me on on battlefield is right around 32 to 48 players you know about double what you get on uh, on consoles probably about the sweet spot for me for battlefield uh, 64 is very interesting I'll just put it that way but uh, and I'm looking forward to that on consoles. I mean, that's next-gen consoles is going to be 64 players de jour for everybody. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that. And 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 again, I know you can buy control. You can buy a, a basically an Xbox 360 controller for the PC. But it, why the fuck would I do that? You know what I mean? I, I'd rather just sit at my TV on my couch and be comfortable with my controller as opposed to dragging my ass over to my computer and sitting in my computer desk chair, you know, with the controller. It's just not as comfortable. That's I, you know. 
There's another console preference for me. I love sitting on my couch and playing on my big screen. I don't have a, you know, a 40-inch monitor. I'm, I want to upgrade to at least a 24-inch uh, monitor. Uh, but right now, I'm rocking, you know, 17. So already my 20-inch TV that I, 22-inch TV that I play on my console is, is better. Um, and you'll notice that I didn't really touch on graphics because... Because fuck you people who you, who say that PC graphics are so much better than console and then turn around the next day and say, well, we don't care about graphics on games. We care about gameplay. You can't have it both ways. You can't say PC is better because it's capable of better graphics and then say you only care about gameplay. It's about the gameplay. Graphics on consoles are good. They're going to get better. Yeah, PC is better. Who gives a shit? It's how the game plays. Please fight in the comments. Bring it on. I love you guys. Talk to you later. You know, without having Battlefield 3 to play, uh, here's Battlefield 2, which is essentially what, as you can tell, Battlefield 3 is going to be after. So, the Bad Company series kind of a, a spin-off. Or on PC, and you're probably and uh, you're most likely it's not, not been officially announced to my knowledge. You're also going to get 64 players on the PlayStation 4 and the next Xbox.